Thank you, Steve. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, Port and Dance Authority, uh, to, for giving me a chance and opportunity to participate in such an important webinar on such an important topic. Uh, as Steve already mentioned, my name is Alexei Panasiuk, uh, and uh, I'm responsible for the international relations in uh, the Ukrainian Seaports Authority. Uh, I just want to give a quick overview of uh, the USBA um, functions and responsibilities. Uh, now, we'll, we, we were um, founded 2013 after the uh, Ukrainian ports reform. Um, we're a state owned enterprise uh, with the assets over $750 million, uh, 160. Uh, two units of fleet. That's what we have, uh, 265 verses, uh, 17 channels, uh, and um, our ports had handled over 159 million tons last year. Uh, we're situated in Odessa, the headquarters is in Odessa. Um, uh, and also we have uh, 13 branches in each seaport plus uh, the Delta pilot branch and uh, the dredging fleet branch. Uh, so what we do for the infrastructure, uh, we provide the effective maintenance and uh, of strategic infrastructure, uh, construction and repair of berths, uh, dredging works on the water area and on the channels. Uh, and also we maintain port infrastructure of common use. Uh, also, we provide the navigation safety. Uh, as already been said, uh, we implement a strategy uh, for port development uh, throughout the development plans of each port. Um, and one of the key aspects of the strategy that we have is uh, uh, the attraction of potential cargo flows to our seaports. And, um, uh, maritime terminals. And I'll give a, a quick overview of the history of the project that we're discussing today. Uh, on, on, the, on October 13th last year, in the framework of the visit of uh, the president of Poland uh, to Ukraine, our enterprise had signed a memorandum with Port of Gas Authority, uh, uh, the memorandum of intent, which gave a start to the development uh, of the Baltic Sea Black Sea Transport Corridor. Uh, this uh, memorandum uh, uh, has given uh, uh, an opportunity uh, to create a Ukrainian Polish working group, um, which um, actually had a first constituent meeting uh, in the end of uh, last year on December 17th. Uh, as for USPA, uh, we had joined uh, the working group as a project coordinator from the Ukrainian side uh, in order to create a, a platform uh, for um, gathering all the interested stakeholders, uh, public and private uh, enterprises to ensure successful implementation uh, of this project. Um, after the working group, by its results, um, after its first meeting, the participants have reached a mutual agreement uh, on the need to form a single tariff for the carriage of goods uh, through the seaport of Chernomorsk uh, in the direction of Port of Gdansk, uh, which will include both, um, uh, both um, maritime and land sections uh, of the route and the calculation of the approximate delivery time of goods uh, carried in containers and trailers. Um, so basically uh, to implement the decisions uh, of uh, the working group, uh, the Ukrainian side has conducted a series of events uh, during the last couple of months um, 
uh, to launch the project using the transit potential of Ukraine and, and Republic of Poland. Rail transport and ferry opportunities, um, including the signing of the memorandum for cooperation between um, our state railway operator, uh, Liski, uh, the internal port operator, which is Ferry Plus, and uh, the ferry carrier, uh, Ukrferi. The, the aim of the memorandum is uh, to create uh, an international modemo route uh, from uh, Turkey, port of Karasu, uh, to Chernomorsk, to a uh, ferry complex, and then to Slavkov and uh, port of Gansk. Uh, this pilot project uh, is aimed to test out so the technology of train formation and uh, coordination of uh, traffic schedules. Um, the first phase of the implementation uh, is um, container transportation, and then we uh, look to, for the, to the trailer uh, transportation. Uh, as of uh, today, uh, the parties of the memo uh, undergoing the process uh, of technology alignment and handling operations with the development of technological schemes uh, for loading and storing uh, containers and trainers uh, within the ferry complex of Chernomorsk seaport. And uh, also the rail station uh, for platforms uh, under feed. Uh, the parties of the memorandum uh, are also in the process of negotiation with some Turkish partners uh, to attract um, cargo traffic, potential cargo traffic. And there's some actually good perspectives for that uh, as uh, we can see some uh, possibility to attract the transit cargoes for Ukraine and Poland. And analyzing the volumes uh, of freight transportation, we look at uh, the Turkey EU direction. Um, and first of all, is traffic to Scandinavian tra uh, countries, uh, that is about 100,000 uh, trucks per year. Uh, Turkish German direction uh, gives us uh, around 200,000 uh, units, uh, out of 20,000 of which is, uh, have a destination of or or origin in the eastern part of uh, Germany near the Polish border. And the Turkey-Sweden route, which has an average uh, freight traffic of about 70,000 uh, semi-trailers per year, most of which are currently transported by uh, road. Sorry, uh, Alexi, also, so, sorry yes. Alexi, to interrupt, because I, I understand you also have a, a presentation to share, and I'm not sure if you are assuming that you are sharing and it's not on screen or I think, uh, yes i i was assuming that um, yeah sorry uh, then i'm glad that i interrupted apologies yes, but it wasn't can, uh, just go quickly through it. that's the information i uh, gave on the enterprise uh the info on the memorandum and actually i stopped here on the yeah i i, I think I think for all attendees as well, it, it just uh, in, in case you've missed something on the previous slides, the slides will be made available through transport events after the event. So, um, sorry, Alexi, please, please. Yes, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Uh, and also, uh, we're looking at uh, um, we're having having large numbers of uh, semi trailers that are transported by. Um, rail using pocket wagons and rural ferries across the Adriatic Sea. So considering the existing uh, uh, Turkey EU freight volumes, uh, uh, we should have a good opportunity to attract uh, the traffic of trailers and semi-trailers transported across the Adriatic Sea uh, by offering uh, adventurous conditions and competitive delivery time and also tariff. Um, the potential cargo traffic volumes at the first stage of the project implementation may reach up to 8,000 uh, units per year, uh, 
but we need to take into account the technical means and uh, the availability of uh, rodent stock for today. The total potential uh, could exceed um, 80,000 uh, units per year. Um, well, basically, summing up, I want to say that uh, by combining all the efforts of all the members of the working group, as well as uh, uh, Ukrainian and Polish um, and other European business entities that are interested in the project, we can create a cheaper alternative route uh, for the traffic of container trailers and semi-trailers between uh, um, Poland, Ukraine, and Turkey. Um, thank you for attention. That's all for me. Thanks, thanks, Alexei. Uh, again, I'll just take advantage of my uh, position in the chair just to ask a couple of questions, if I may, and then we'll um, obviously at the end we have more Q and A's. One one thing that um, concerns me a little bit about the um, the prospect of this corridor is the impact that it has on some of the other ports and, and other port authorities. So for example, I mean, you mentioned Chornomorsk um, and that they're, they're included in this um, proposal. Um, obviously there's, there's other ports like Odessa or, or TIS or whoever else in, in the Black Sea or, or in the Ukraine. I, I just wonder, is, is there a danger of um, say cargo that's destined for Kiev, for example, being shipped over Gdansk instead of its more natural route, which would be via Odessa, Chornomorsk. Do you see that as a as a threat for the Ukrainian ports? I, I don't see that as a threat for Ukrainian ports, uh, uh, unless uh, a cargo moves through the ports. Anyway, it doesn't matter which port we choose uh, inside our enterprise, uh, uh, every port is actually our branch and we are the head office. So uh, if we're saying, uh, speaking, uh, for example, Chernomorsk or Odessa, um, it shouldn't have any um, threats for that. So 